You're horrified at those nursing babies being ripped from their mother's arms by ICE agents. You're speechless and apoplectic at the same time over kids who have literally done nothing wrong being put into shelters that you know full well are jails. You may be old enough to remember abominable things like this being done by the Soviet Union, which you abhorred. After all, we were the good guys and didn't abuse people. So why is the Trump administration doing these reprehensible things in our name? Have a look at my post about Trump's negotiating strategy. There's a link in the written post. It's always about taking something away and forcing opponents to bargain to get it back. And he's doing that right now using these children. He has assaulted our sense of right and wrong and taken away our self-image of being the good guys. He has betrayed our belief in proper treatment of others, all in order to make Democrats cave to his anti-black, brown and Muslim shithole countries immigration plan. Aryans like Norwegians, he tells us are okay. In the process, he's traumatizing thousands of innocent children and their parents, many of whom are only applying for asylum from deadly violence and have done nothing wrong. But we have. We have allowed those with the crudest, most primitive, fear-driven impulses to have power. Yes, I'm talking about the 87% of Republicans who support Trump and give him the power to punish Republican opponents with a tweet. We set that up. We set ourselves up by failing to show up and vote last November. Yes, the 87% hair on fire primitives voted. They always do because they're always afraid and angry and motivated. The only check on them is for reasonable people to show up in bigger numbers. So if you want to see an end to out outrageous manipulation and the terrible abuse of people, an end to using people as pawns to gain power and crushing them under heel in the process, you have to do two things, and they're very personal. First, you have to vote this November. Second, you have to work to inspire others to show up and vote too. A good way to start is to share this post with three others. Be clear that they're continuing to take away voting rights. Last week, the Supreme Court allowed the state of Ohio to continue to purge their registered voter lists of people who were guilty of nothing more than not having voted for two years and who didn't respond to their postcard. I don't remember either of those actions being required by the Constitution in order to be eligible to vote. But that is where this nation is going if we let it. Use it or lose it. If you don't vote, permanent internment camps in the desert overfilled with orphaned infants may be next, and Trump-pardoned Joe Arpaio may be the warden. I'm Jack Alshuler.